So our third speaker is going to be Virginia Quick. She's from Rutgers University, and she's going to be talking to us today about the shortened International Physical Activity Questionnaire. So just a quick bio about Dr. Quick. She is an RD and the director of the dietetic program in dietetics in the Department of Nutritional Sciences, School of Environmental and Biological Sciences at Rutgers University in New Brunswick. She holds her Bachelor of Science and Doctorate degrees in Nutritional Sciences from Rutgers University and has been a registered dietitian nutritionist for over 15 years. She has prior training as a postdoctoral fellow in the Interdisciplinary Research Training in Child and Adolescent Primary Care Fellowship Training Program at the University of Minnesota's Division of Epidemiology and Community Health. Additionally, she was a postdoctoral fellow for two years at the National Institutes of Health Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. So at NIH, she worked with the NICHD research team on a behavioral intervention focused on improving dietary behaviors among children and adolescents with type 1 diabetes. Before coming to Rutgers University in the fall of 2015, she was an assistant professor at James Madison University in the Nutrition and Dietetics program where her research focus was on the etiology and prevention of disordered eating behaviors among youth and young adults, particularly those with chronic illnesses. To date, Dr. Quick has published over 80 manuscripts in peer-reviewed nutrition and health journals, seven book chapters, and over 70 published abstracts for poster presentations at national and state conferences. Her published research has focused mainly on the etiology and prevention of obesity and disordered eating behaviors community nutrition interventions, and program assessment and evaluation across the lifespan. So we're back, very happy to have Dr. Quick with us today. So without further ado, I will turn it over to her. Hi, everybody. My name is Virginia Quick, and I am the director of the didactic program in dietetics at Rutgers University. And today I'm going to talk to you about the uh, short international physical activity questionnaire. So the val there are valid and valuable instruments for assessing physical activity level that are necessary to assess current physical activity levels and capture changes over time that, help, that may help to establish the effectiveness of interventions designed to increase activity levels. Now, objective measures include tools that directly assess one or more dimensions of physical activity and have the ability to capture a variety of metrics. Commonly used tools for measuring physical activity objectively include wearable monitors like accelerometers and pedometers. Physical activity is multifaceted and complex behavior, and research has found that these objective measures are able to better capture intricacies of physical activity dimensions and provide a more continuous evaluation of free living activity. However, there are some weaknesses. Um, and these are that they can be rather expensive and require substantial expertise to administer in a large population research study. Subjective measures include self-report tools like physical activity diaries and recall questionnaires. However, the subjective measures present limitations in capturing physical activity due to participant recall bias and interpretation of questions, along with floor facts that can be created by instruments failing to capture the lower end of physical activity, like light activities. On the other hand, there are some merits. These self-recall measures of physical activity are more feasible, cost-effective, and easier to administer in large-scale population studies and have provided some evidence uh, and being validated against other objective measures of physical activity. Okay. One self-report instrument that has been widely used to assess physical activity um, include the International Physical Activity Questionnaire, and there are both short and long form versions. There has been extensive reliability and validity testing of the short and long um, uh, versions of the IPAC among adults across 12 countries, along with being conducted in university students, and they show acceptable measurement properties for assessing physical activity level. The self-administered IPAC short form is a self-report instrument that assesses physical activity during the past seven days. Participants report frequency, which is days per week, 
that they engage in each of these activities listed here for at least 10 minutes per session. So that includes walking, moderate and vigorous intensity activity, along with sitting. Participants report the duration, which is minutes per average day, that they engage in each of these activities, which then permits calculations of what's known as metabolic equivalence uh, per minutes per week. The IPAC traditional short form scoring algorithm, shown here as IPAC TSA, includes frequency and duration responses for walking, moderate intensity activity, and vigorous intensity activity. Sitting is not included in this algorithm. Um, the first step in scoring is to calculate the minutes per week uh, you spent in each of these activities. Next, the minutes per week in each activity are multiplied by the activity's corresponding metabolic equivalence to estimate the met minutes per week. Then the met minutes per week for each activity are summed to derive the total physical activity mets per minutes per week. And finally, uh, participants can then further be categorized into low, moderate, and high levels of physical activity using the IPAC scoring guidelines. However, researchers have noted that the minutes per day estimates required by the IPAC traditional short form are rather burdensome for participants to estimate and may be, be misreported. Thus, the streamlined enhanced version of the IPAC short form scoring methodology was born. So the IPAC streamlined scoring algorithm was derived to estimate physical activity level using frequency uh, per day of these uh, three different um, intensity activities. So walking, moderate intensity and vigorous intensity activities. And here's the actual calculation. So it includes calculating the number of days of vigorous activities per week times three, adding that to days of moderate activities times two, and then adding that again to days of walking at a time and days of strength training. So a new category is days of strike training that is reported. And this makes a total possible score range of zero to 49. So the traditional IPAC form has similar weighting on physical activity types, uh, whereby the higher intensity physical activities correspond with the higher METs. So streamlining permitted the calculations without using the metabolic equivalents, which sometimes are misreported or not reported at all. So the enhancements accounted for the relative intensity of activity. Um, that is that the vigorous activities and moderate activity was weighted higher than walking and strength training. Further, the IPAC uh, streamlined and enhanced version was categorized into low, moderate, and high score physical activity level groups using these cutoffs. So next we wanted to actually test the streamline enhanced um, IPAC version. And in order to do this, we used um, a data set from a behavioral nutrition and physical activity intervention. We only used the baseline data from participants from Web Health. They were college students from eight different universities, ages 18 to 24. And so we calculated both versions of the IPAC uh, the new streamlined enhanced version and the short IPAC. We also ended up um, calculating or finding other fitness estimates that we could compare against. So we used the, um, we were able to calculate VO2 max using the Queens College step test. And this is a standard measure of cardiorespiratory fitness that estimates maximal oxygen uptake or VO2 max. From there, we were able to calculate the American College of Sports Medicine fitness categories for maximal aerobic power, um, along with the USDA exercise self-assessment fitness categories. So what did we find? When we, well, when we categorizing, by categorizing the IPAC using the traditional scoring of categories of low, moderate, or high, it actually classified a majority of participants as being in the moderate or high levels of physical activity, so almost 93%. Whereas when we use the score using the streamlined enhanced version, categories of participants were more evenly distributed across all three levels as highlighted here. 
When we did spear and rank order correlations, what we found is that the correlations between the IPAC traditional short form and the IPAC streamline enhanced version categories and their total scores were fair around 0.72 or higher. Correlations of the IPAC traditional and the streamlined categories with estimated VO2 max and the um, ACM fitness categories and USDA exercise self-assessment were similar in strength and significance. So specifically, uh, both versions had weak correlations with estimated VO2 max and the ACM fitness categories in the, you know, the correlation around 0.2 or so and they had moderate correlations with the USD exercise self-assessment categories around 0.52 and 0.55. Additionally, the IPAC streamline enhanced categories were more strongly correlated with the total score at 0.93 uh, compared to correlations between the traditional short room categories and the total score, which was at 0.82. So findings suggest that both the traditional short form and the streamlined versions perform similarly well at assessing physical activity when compared against fitness measures. However, the streamlined enhanced version may be considered more advantageous because it's shorter and easier to complete because of less thought is needed of participants in recalling minutes per week of each physical activity. So the IPAC streamlined and enhanced version shows promise in research studies examining and monitoring physical activity behavior patterns among university students. However, validation of the IPAC streamlined enhanced version with objective measures of physical activity in other study, study populations is warranted. I'd like to thank you for your time. If you have any questions about the streamlined enhanced version, you can find more information in the article uh, cited here. Um, along with, I just want to highlight the funding for this work. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Quick, for sharing that presentation. And so Dr. Quick is on the call with us today. So she's here to answer any questions that anyone on the call is, um, has in mind. So again, just as that final reminder, um, go ahead and type your questions into the chat box. So the Q&A feature and we can definitely have Dr. Quick answer those. And in the meantime, one question that did pop up as you were going through that, um, just out of curiosity, anywhere as part of like the data collection or on the tool itself, do you ask the students or the participants um, if it's a normal week for them? Because I know they assess over the past seven days. Um, but yeah, I was just curious. About yeah, that. so it is an overall, that's a great question. It is an overall estimate in the last seven days. What is your usual kind of activity when it relates to vigorous activity, moderate and walking? And there are some examples in the question with what kind of includes vigorous versus moderate. Uh, so that helps, I think, in a sense, get students thinking along those lines when they're answering the question. Okay. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. I just know for me personally, as a student, week to week, it definitely varies. But I think including, you know, like what's a usual week kind of helps direct people to that. Okay. And then one more question just on your general thoughts regarding, you know, self-reported data, especially related to physical activity. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you feel like people are generally kind of overestimating the physical activity that they are doing? I know you said you know, more studies are warranted that uses the objective measures. But what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I know in general, it's very hard for someone to recall oftentimes in the last seven days what their physical activity levels are. Um, and so it definitely is a challenge in self-reported kind of instrument measurement tools like the physical activity. I guess you could say the same thing with assessing eating behaviors. It's the same kind of challenges that we face in terms of, you know, if either under or over reporting. So, but yeah, it's definitely a challenge. And, um, you know, we try our best to find the best measures to get at estimating, you know, physical activity and eating, beha eating behaviors. And uh, depending on the population you're working with, you know, one measurement may be, you know, a better evaluation tool compared to the other, depending on the circumstances. So I guess you have to take all those things into account and consideration when deciding what 
you know, what's the, the best type of measure, depending on what your outcome is. Right, for sure. That makes sense. And also, you know, feasibility, it's probably not as feasible to have objective physical technology on everyone to assess those measures. So taking those and things. We, and I've done work before with pedometers and that can be challenging too in itself with getting people to actually wear them and consistently report, putting their information. So there's challenges on all fronts. <laughs> right, exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much for answering, you know, the questions that I had throughout that presentation. I don't see any questions in the chat box for now, but we will keep monitoring it. And if any other questions do come up, um, we will make sure to have Dr. Quick answer those. So again, thank you so much.